Hello, everybody. Welcome to Talk About Houses. I'm Todd. I'm Lana. Okay, so we're going to do an update to Las Vegas real estate market. New data just came out. I know we just did one like a week ago, but this is like updated data. And, uh, you know, last week, like we thought the market was going to chill out in Vegas and it like took off again, right? So we're going to let's look at what it did this week. So we'll start with market action is 46. It was 46 last week. Right. So basically, it's the same. It did, it's a strong seller's market. Right. Okay. Um, Okay, let's go over the real-time market profile. Uh, median list price did increase back, back up to 570, basically 569.9. Uh, median price of new listings went up to 489. Um, the reason why there's a discrepancy is there is because higher-end homes tend to stay in the market longer. Right. So newer, you say, well, why is this $100,000 difference? Talk about that, Juana. How long does it take to sell a $3 million house versus a you know, $250,000 house in Spring Valley? So it's really interesting. Homes, you know, under 750 sell really fast. Homes that are between 750 and like 1.5, 2 million, they struggle and it's okay. really interesting. Okay. You know, you go past 3 million and again, they take off again. So there's this funky spot, you know, in that at the bottom of the luxury market okay. where they're not quite luxury, but they're not quite middle class either. They're like that, that in between place, and those homes struggle. Okay. Also, there's less of the homes in the higher. So this right. is median. Median is not average, it's the middle house. So if there's 10 luxury houses and 300 smaller houses, mm -hmm. then it's not enough to pull the median up very much. Right. Uh, price per square foot, 258, that's super high. It's about the highest it's been all. Pretty much for the last year. We've got some detailed charts for the last year that are very interesting. Mm -hmm. Here's the really shocking one. If you go down to inventory, it, it looked like it was going to like level off, but it's dropped. It dropped mm -hmm. last week by like over 100 in the condo market. It even dropped and it dropped again. Right. So inventory is still dropping. Uh, we got a full chart to show you on that. Um, so we'll go to the first chart here. And this is, uh, let's just go right to... Median list price. Now this looks weird because um, you see a big up and down. But the interesting thing about median list price is we're well above a year ago today. So this is that year over year comparison people have asked us. And if you go back to the dots and look 2022, 21, it's up every year, year mm -hmm. over year. And I think that surprises people that we're up year over year. Now that hump is the June, May, June. But that was sort of a false hump. Why was that a false hump in May of June of last year for okay. list prices being super high? Right. So that was um, it was kind of the last big gasp of the fear of missing out people. Right. So they could they had their five percent loan lock still. Right. Right. So that was a, that that last gasp of that. But other than that, you can kind of see that you know to your point, year over year. Uh, we're either on par or higher this year than last year. Yeah. And then this next one is inventory. Um, as you look at back over the years, uh, you know, we have the 2019 where inventory was really high, and that was the first people thought, hey, what's going on? It should, be, it should have declined throughout the spring. It didn't. It climbed. And then, of course, remember the Fed was raising rates. People don't realize this, but rates got up pretty high, got up in the upper fours mm -hmm. for a while in 2019. And then when the pandemic happened, we went into a recession. So the Fed literally put the interest rate to zero. Right. That's how we got these 2% interest rates. But what was weird is if you look back at that dot that's right, July of 2022, inventory was absolutely screaming right now. Homes were flooding the market. People were in fear of a crash that never happened. And you can see now this looks completely out of out of sync. I mean, look at that. It's like the spike up mm -hmm. of inventory, and now we still have decreasing inventory. Wanna, right. What do you make of that? That's a little bit, you know, that's a little bit un, you know, because normally it, it goes up, it goes up and down, and up and down, and it's pretty steady, but it's sort of still going down, which is kind of weird. So, it, you know, it's something that we talked about before is you had people last year that kind of got pushed into selling early, so to speak, right? So those sales happened last year versus this year. So that's part of that lack of inventory this year. And of course, this year we also have the, the high interest rates. So sellers that uh, were thinking about selling this year and buying something else, now they're kind of on the fence and they're going to just wait it out. Um, and then this last chart here, this is the price per square foot. If you go back to January 
of last year when interest rates, we, we could still get three something mm -hmm. under four, we'll call it under 4%. You could get 3.5 or 375, mm -hmm. okay? Homes only sold for 246 bucks a square foot. Right now we got 258. Right. So let's talk about that. Yes, it did peak a little because there was this, you know, there was a limited number of homes on the market. So prices got artificially pushed up. Mm -hmm. So that's really not a, um, you can't put a pin in that and say, okay, let's measure everything based on this, right? Because if you, whether you got a house 18 months ago or six months ago, the house is worth more money. And, yes. and 18 months ago, interest rates were half. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and then the other thing to keep in mind is that this is looking at the whole market. You know, depending on where you are positioned in the market, both geographically and price point, it may look different for you. And here's what I mean by that. Uh, geographically, remember real estate is hyper-local, so you know, it could be that the next street over is a different subdivision and those homes have a different value. And then as far as where you are in the market. So homes under 400,000 tend to have appreciated more than homes over 400,000. Homes under 400,000 uh, tend to sell faster than homes over 400,000. So, so those are all things to kind of consider in the mix because this data doesn't get that granular. It just kind of looks at the market more broadly. And, and, and we actually do limit the data. So this data that you saw was only for Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. It doesn't include Henderson or North Las Vegas. In North Las Vegas, the price per square foot would be less. In Henderson, it would be more. Mm -hmm. In both, there's very little inventory. Correct. There's not, it's not like there's massive inventory in one or the other. And then this does not include condos. It does include townhouses, but not include condos. Mm -hmm. um, because obviously once you start throwing in more stuff into the mix, you know, if you, if you get a bunch of condos that hit the market and sell, it can drop the median price, which is why sometimes just looking at median price is not necessarily the best way to go. Because home prices can stay the same, but if more cheaper homes sell, for example, interest rates go up. Mm -hmm. So people are like, okay, well, let's just transact in the lower. Well, everyone, will, they'll push everybody down to lower dollar rounds. And then more of those homes sell. It looks like the, because all you look at is the total of homes that sold. It doesn't index individual homes and say, what did this house do in value? It just says, what were the total number of, of homes that sold? And then it looks at that and goes, oh, well, it dropped. But that, it doesn't mean the same sold, so, homes sold for less. Correct. Oh, we had a famous example in Lake Las Vegas back in 2004 when the market was up 50%. It's the first time we ever had a 50% increase in a year. And there was this one zip code where Lake Las Vegas is where home prices were down like 60%. And people were freaking out. But what had happened was they'd originally only built like multi-million dollar homes. Mm -hmm. And someone had come in, in in that same area and built like a whole bunch of tract homes. Mm -hmm. So all these tract homes started selling. So instead of the median sale price being like 1.2 million, it was like, you know, 600,000 right. because you averaged in, even though home prices were going up, when you average in all these new homes that are being built in the lower end, and then you go pick the middle home, it's now a much lower number. Right, plus of course there were more uh, transactions in the lower end than in the upper end, so that that's what skewed those numbers. So it's really important that you have context when you're looking at these numbers. Yeah, but you know, we're gonna still look at this probably on a weekly basis, maybe every two weeks as we go through the summer into the fall, because it's gonna kinda, it's probably gonna get boring, I think what we'll do is we'll just look at it when the numbers come out. Um, the reason why we even did a video last week is because we saw it starting to kind of chill off and level off, and then it like literally took off. The market action shot up. A bunch of homes sold, you know, like like two hundred more homes sold than were listed. Right. And then that got us got our attention, mm -hmm. and the inventory dropped, and then it's dropped again the last week, which is really really got our attention because as you saw for the inventory slide that. The opposite happened last, you know, we had, we were having hundreds of houses come on every week that weren't, and now we have hundreds of houses disappearing from the market. Right. So it's really important to understand that that inventory crunch is continuing and it's going to provide a lot of support for prices. It's going to um, continue that scarcity that we've had in, in the marketplace. And, uh, you know, I know it, it, people are struggling. People are struggling because they're saying, hey, you know, I'm ready, willing, and able to buy, but there's no product out there for me. So, um, you know, there are basically two stories. It's a, a tale of two stories out there, right? One is affordability and the other one is inventory. And they both are in the same place that they, there's nothing to buy. Let's talk about long-term. The big, the big complaint has been 
jobs in Vegas don't pay enough for people to afford a four hundred and thirty thousand dollar. I mean, that's just ridiculous. That's so much money. I mean, that's a twenty four hundred dollar a month mortgage payment. People, how could anyone afford that in Las Vegas, where everybody is a, you know, valet, car parker, or whatever? And let's, let's talk about two things. Let's talk about the work from home people who have all moved here, mm -hmm. and how much they make. And then let's talk about because if you watch social media, you just saw the globe, yes. like the the sphere just got turned on. So mm -hmm. all of a sudden, all of our Facebook, you have pictures of like the stuff, like the fireworks on Fourth of July, and mm -hmm. and we have a bunch of stuff like that coming online. Eighty thousand people moving here in the next year, and that create those are not all like minimum wage jobs. No, so there are a lot of good jobs in Vegas. Yes, you know we are a tourism industry, but there's so much more to Las Vegas than tourism. And there is a lot of technology here. Um, you know, we're talking about having a, a movie studio here. There's there's so much more happening than just the tourism section. You know, it's like when people come to Las Vegas. Uh, you know, one of the one of the questions that they ask is, which hotel do you live in? It's like, uh, no, we live out in the suburbs. That's where everybody lives. Is oh that we all live in homes. We don't live on the strip. <laughs> um, so. You know, there's so much more than the hospitality industry to Las Vegas. Yes, the hospitality industry is huge. Yes, all the support businesses for for the hospitality industry are very important, and they they do make up a significant portion of our economy. But there is more to Las Vegas than that. Okay, so the bottom line is, I personally don't see a massive imbalance or bubble. This is not like when home builders were building, you know, ridiculous amounts of homes. For people that weren't even here, and it were just speculators buying these. Uh, the other thing that I'm noticing is that we just put a rental on the market, and you got calls pretty much right away, right? Right, we did get calls right away. But kind of going back to what you said about the builders, um, the builders are pre-selling uh, subdivisions that they haven't even broken ground on, which is very common. What does that mean, pre-selling? Okay, Tell so what it means. so that means that uh, most of the time they don't even have any models. They Builders are putting up um, sketches online. Uh, they're putting up virtual homes online, and people are saying, "Hey, I would like that home," and they sign up to buy a home. They put down a deposit, and the builder hasn't even broken ground. Uh, sometimes they'll have some models, but they'll be building that model all over the valley, and uh, maybe the community that you're buying in is not even slated to be started for a year or two. So that's not uncommon either. So builders. Are not exactly uh, rushing to the marketplace and putting up homes at record pace. They're still pacing themselves as far as uh, putting up homes for a number of reasons. One is the labor shortage. Another one is materials, uh, and then of course they want to make sure that uh, this interest in in their product is sustainable. So while they are taking um, lot reservations and they are collecting deposits, uh, they're not going out there and instantly putting up. Uh, an absurd number of homes. Uh, the the last thing with builders, and we'll sort of wrap up the video. You know, eighty thousand people moving here. Some of those people will move into apartments or move in with some friends or people they know, and some are families. So it's not like eighty thousand individual purchasers, but you still need ten to fifteen thousand new homes mm -hmm. to be built, and they're not building uh, that many homes here. Mm -hmm. They're not building ten to fifteen thousand new homes. They're being very cautious, mm -hmm. and that's the reason inventory in the resale market's disappearing. Um, and it's still declining. This fall is going to, I think, be super interesting. I said it last year, if you go back to our video from j probably July, June, July, I, I, what I said specifically was it'll be interesting to see what really happens in this fall because that would be the telltale. And what we found was that inventory skyrocketed and then we're right back, to an, back from a super low level to a normal level, but it didn't keep going up. Mm -hmm. It started dropping again. So, And then when that happened, home prices about three months later, it started to go up. And then the other thing is, I know there's going to be somebody who puts in the comments, oh, God, not list price. That doesn't mean anything. Absolutely means something. These people are not just making up numbers. The, the list price is a leading indicator to what home sales are going to do. And if they're still going up, there's a possibility. Because remember, last year they weren't. They were List prices were dropping substantially right now in July. But now they're going up. So, and remember, home prices started dropping at this time, but one of what could happen in two or three months from now, couldn't we see closed list price, closed price per, per square foot 
and s total median price is actually still going up through the summer we can, because yeah. this this leading indicator of of list price. Right, we can uh, because you know to your point, that leading leading indicator of list price it lets you know what's happening as far as buyers. If uh, those list prices are elevated, then you know those uh, sellers and those agents have a choice. You know if they're not getting any traction with those prices, they're going to lower the price. But if they're not lowering the price, if they're getting accepted offers with those list prices, not necessarily at list price, but with those list prices, then that tell us, tells us that the market's still really strong and it's still a seller's market. Um, you know, we do know lots of situations where, uh, particularly on the higher end, uh, we're still seeing people paying over appraised value and not a little bit, a lot yeah, over appraised value. Even, even when they're uh, financing, and of course, a lot of them are paying cash. So it's really interesting what's going on out there. We'd like to know from you what's going on where you are. Um, we love it when you tell us where you're watching from and what's happening in your market. Please educate us. Uh, please remember to like the video, subscribe, hit the notification bell, share the video, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye. Bye.